A few weeks ago, every headline read as follows. Southwest cancels spring break flights, or Southwest flights canceled, or flights canceled during spring break amid bad weather. Well, the truth is, that isn't the full story. Now, unless you're watching this video in, say, 2025 on June 8th at 9.08pm in the airport after this channel blows up, a couple more weeks have passed, and the relevancy of this video likely isn't as present. So this will be both a bit of a story, and a healthy dose of criticism of Southwest Airlines. So strap in, grab some popcorn or whatever else you're supposed to eat before cremation, and I hope you enjoy this story. I don't sleep often or particularly like sleeping, but when I sleep, I sleep well. Except today was a bit different. I had gone nearly one and a half days without sleep, failed two exams, and been waiting for an airplane for about 36 hours. Here's the Southwest Airlines experience. The first day began like any other day. I woke up to ash and dust, wiped my brow, and swept my rust. I mean, the room was dusty, but I'm a college student, and have never heard the words clean room in my life, but it wasn't that bad. It was Saturday, and I was looking forward to a nice relaxing weekend after flying home, but I had two exams today. Two exams on a Saturday. Literally 1984 or something. Now, I'm normally a guy who studies like once a year, and it's on accident if anything, but these exams were different. I'm in college for computer engineering, which means that yes, I'm a nerd, but more importantly, those two exams were crucial for my degree. And those two exams were for programming in C, C89 specifically, because yes, the college is that old school, and for assembly. When I say assembly, that probably means very little to most of you, but essentially, it's how a computer works. Deep inside a computer, there's a bunch of wires and other things that are important, but assembly is like the most basic set of instructions that a computer can understand. Anyways, look it up if you so feel inclined, but this exam was one of the hardest exams at the university, according to most people that I've spoken with, so just keep that in mind. So I had stayed up until about 1am the night before studying, or pretending to study, as a large portion of that time involved me watching furry content, or the odd ones out. Although he is a furry, so I guess there was no need to specify. A couple young rabble rousers joined the Discord server as well, so I had to deal with that, or by extension, tell someone else to deal with that. But point being, I was not running on the most sleep, as I had woken up at 7am, and my first exam was at 10am. Fast forward to 10am when the first exam takes takes place because between waking up, almost falling asleep in the shower, and not eating breakfast, nothing important happened until then. So I got to the exam early, sat in the back right corner of the room with my buddies who I'd studied with the day before because we contemplated cheating, admittedly, given how difficult we knew this exam was going to be. Although we actually didn't cheat, despite the mutual look of despair across literally everyone's faces in the exam room. The exam was easily the most difficult thing I have ever seen. I did like half the free response questions legit, and guessed on like most of the multiple choice questions. Before I went back to pretend like I knew what I was doing on the remainder of the free response questions, although admittedly it wasn't any better. I'll put a few questions up on screen if you're not listening to this video in the background already, but this isn't even English or math, so have fun trying to understand literally any of this. So for us engineers, this is not something that's super complicated, but as far as uh, standards go, it's it's definitely very difficult on the engineering side, specifically computer engineering or computer science. Um, I might have another video coming out soon about universities, but maybe not, we'll see. It really depends. It's not fun. So I turned in my exam, and the rest of my day was about as gloomy as the brimstone Christians yelling about hell in front of the library at every college. I got back to my dorm, and I was like, well, at least it can't get any worse than that, right? Wrong. Remember those flights and like the entire title and thumbnail of the video? Oh, it gets so much worse. But back to the other exam I took. It went more or less the same way, but this time we had this magical thing floating around my head known as existential dread. The thoughts went something like this. Everyone else in this class is like 28 and I'm 19. Should I really be here? They're like all professional Indian programmers and I'm just some white person. I probably won't get more than a 40 on this exam. I don't really belong here. What is the G? I'm definitely failing this class. Is the answer to number two C? I still haven't eaten breakfast yet or dinner the night before. Time's up, no more writing, submit your exams now. So anyone else like being trapped in their head for like an hour and a half, or is that just me? Anyways, today was off to a rough start, and I still have yet to get to the airport. I also didn't have a ride to the airport, so the first phase of my genius plan was in action. One of the great parts of being a Christian, other than going to furry heaven when I die, is having about 30 people I can call up that will give me a ride to places if I need a ride. There's so many people, why are you like this? Intrusive thoughts ended an hour ago. Shut up. Yeah, that's right, I'm the one holding the gun. What if I also had a gun? Okay, so safe to say, I was able to get a ride to the airport, and the intrusive thoughts came back, but it was mostly for the friends giving me a ride. We had this funny conversation about secret rooms that you could be escorted to in the airport if you tell the staff that you have this secret item that has a long fuse and detonates. Think of it like opening a secret wall in Legend of Zelda, but if you did this in an airport, they would probably also ban you from flying. Although seeing the secret room would be pretty cool, and I could, you know, use a few more rupees, I could see why you'd want to do it. 
Now, before I had gotten this ride, I noticed something suspicious about the flight. I checked the Southwest app on my phone and noticed that the flight had been delayed twice. Oh, it's probably just the weather. Anyways, I had also let my friends know who gave me the ride that it might be cancelled or delayed, so I asked if they could wait a bit. Now, if you've ever been to an airport, you're not allowed to wait, like, at all. They want you to get in and out at light speed, and anything less than that, they'll be blowing whistles and screaming at your car to leave to make room for other cars. So, I assume my friends left, but I did a very poor job communicating, so I really hope they made it out of there fine. Traffic is always crazy at the airport, and overall it can be a bit stressful, so I hope they got out of there fine. Now, I went out of the unloading dock and into the main airport, and it's massive. Almost as massive as your mom. There are at least three floors if we're counting only the visible ones, and every airline you could possibly think of was there as well. You've got Delta, United, Spirit, Air Canada even, but Southwest. Southwest would be the hero of our story, or anti-hero. Or hero that shows up a whole day late, but the point is, Southwest was the airline that I'd booked with. So I went up to my gate at the airline, went to get my boarding pass, and invalid. What? Alright, so I was a bit worried. I tried scanning it again, and got the same error message. Invalid. I tried switching to my other boarding pass because it's a connecting flight and maybe I- Invalid. Ugh. Okay, so plan B, and no, that is not an Isaac reference because it is a normal phrase, you nerds. So I went down two floors on the escalator and asked one of Southwest's agents for help. I was told to wait in a line, which wasn't too bad. It was only like, you know, 60 people. Honestly, this probably should have been my first sign that something was up with the airline, but at this point, I just figured it was one of those days because my exam sucked, but oh no, I was in for much worse. My mom decides to call me on the phone while I'm in line, and is worried about the time of the flight. I am as well, but she likes to remind me of the obvious in the classic teenage mother relationship that we have, because I, the all-knowing 19-year-old, know that yes, it's getting close to the departure time of the flight. She even mentions that I should tell the 40 people left in line in front of me that the flight is soon, so I should go in front of them, but I told her, nope, that's cutting, and basically hung up on her. Man, I love family dynamics. So there's like 30 minutes left before my flight departs, and I finally get to an agent at the help desk. She prints out a physical version of the boarding pass, I thank her, and then run back up two floors of escalators with my blue backpack and blue suitcase. I slam my boarding pass onto the machine, and I am finally through the gate. So after running through the gate and boarding a tram to another part of the airport, we get to the part where you take off 90% of your clothes like it's a college party or something, and they blast you with x-rays so you get cancer in 3-5 business years. I scramble to unload my backpack, put my laptop on a separate tray so they can put a 5G chip on it while it's processing or something. Honestly, I don't know, I never read the rules, I was just told to do that, so as a proud American, I always assume the worst with the security protocols governing our transportation services. Yeehaw, brothers. The amount of irony in this video seems so saturated that you could like squeeze the video and it would drip out like harvesting something, like honeycombs, I don't know. Okay, so I scramble through security, put everything back on, and store it away in my backpack again. And then I end up waiting two hours. Yep, being worried earlier meant nothing because the flight delays were only just beginning. This was only the first plane to hit my rapidly crumbling emotional tower. So I waited for two hours and boarded the first plane, which was a very quick flight. I wrote down 22 minutes, but honestly my memory is about as damaged from 43 hours of not sleeping as you'd probably imagine. So it could have been three times as long, and I never would have known in comparison to what comes next. By this point, it's nearly midnight, and I learned that my next flight was delayed as you'd probably imagine from everything so far. McDonald's was also closed at the airport, which seems like an apocalypse by itself, so the next best option was Jersey Mike's. After waiting in a short line of like 8 or 9 people, I ordered an 8 inch sub with just turkey and cheese on it, because I really am that basic, and a lemonade. It came out to $19, which is crazy by itself, but to put some perspective into it, if you worked minimum wage in today's economy, you'd have to work for 2 hours just to afford that one sub, and a lemonade. It didn't even come with chips. So while I'm sitting there, eating my one and only meal from the past 24 hours, and occasionally texting my parents, I'm thinking that my next and final flight home would be here at about 1am. Surely it wouldn't be delayed any more than an hour or so, right? I get up with my luggage and wander over to the gate, and hop on Discord as anyone with an internet addiction would probably do. Now unlike most other internet users, I actually have a decent number of friends, and you can too, so here's a casual plug of the Discord server if you're ever stuck at the airport and I needed some friends to keep you awake as I once was. Anyways, I hop into VC, and we've got a few people around to talk and chill for a bit. Now my memory is about as fuzzy as ever from this experience, and to quickly break any immersion that was somehow left in the video, I'm finishing the script about 3 weeks after this initially happened, and I was none the wiser right on any of these events. Now that I think about it, I guess that can make for some Really fun gaslighting. I did at the very least write down the names of everyone in VC throughout the next two days, so I can give them credit for being there to help me power through the night. So to the best of my recollection, our gang, our dream team if you will, was Artemis, Gut, Luke, Bagel, and a couple of Artemis' friends. I'll go ahead and mention Cheeseburger and a person because I know they were in VC at some point throughout the next two days, and I think it was tonight, but honestly I can't remember, and I can't be bothered to figure it out either, because trust me, I did try. 
So Artemis was playing Stardew Valley along with Cheeseburger and a person. Vega was playing Dead by Daylight and is exclusively a Legion main, so have fun with that useless bit of knowledge. Now as for me, I was being your typical, or atypical, depending on how you see it, teen, and had my face cam on with like a whole two pixels, while my friends were making jokes pertaining to objects used to open secret walls like in Legend of Zelda, because those jokes never left. Flashback to like 6 minutes earlier in the video because yep, the, uh, the, maybe that's the time, I don't know. Timestamp something? Editor, please? Yeah, so bright teenager activities aside, my time was well spent playing one of 12 idle games that I'd installed at the time, next to my parents so that they knew that I'm alive, and another set of collector ones. People gradually filtered out through the course of the night, so without any Stardew Valley to watch, no Dead by Daylight to cringe at, or eventually anyone to talk with, I was alone. The atmosphere was equally dead, given that it was nearly 4 in the morning by this point. Children were scattered on the floor and asleep. Some adults even did the same, with their luggage piled under their heads to protect it from whatever pesky odd certain uh, er, mm, uh, person would steal or potentially mess with their stuff. And here comes the fun part. I decided as a casual business entrepreneur and investor that it would be wise to put an energy down payment on a monster. Basically, I just bought a monster. I don't know why I needed to explain it that way. I, I bought a monster. That's all there is to say. So the airport was asleep, except for me, the workers, and a couple others equally determined to fight off the sleep. Of the workers, there was also the one person manning the market at the airport. So I looked at her, looked at the shelf, looked back at her, and then went up to the shelf, grabbed what I thought was the original flavor of Monster, and handed it to her. She probably thought it was some teenage degenerate feeling to monster addiction, and while I might be the first half of that statement, I have actually never tried monster before. Yep, I have never once tried monster, and it was something I figured would be beneficial in my lowest of lows, stuck at an airport. I walked back to my seat, which inevitably lost my butt marks from sitting there for three hours, and sat down once again, pulled up my laptop, took a quick picture of the monster to show my parents that I was making healthy decisions, and then tried to open it. Now, I've got small fingernails, and I keep them trimmed because of some trichotillomania that I've dealt with in the past, and that habit never really left. Either way, I wouldn't recommend looking that up, because while I provided context to my fingernails being short, you will likely see some very gruesome images if you search up what that is. And it's potentially a video for another time. Maybe the Q&A that we'll do when we hit a thousand that I promised, like, years ago. Anyways, complete tangent aside, I struggled to open the monster, so I ended up asking the guy next to me, because apparently I lack the basic skills to function as a human being in our soda-ridden society. I gave it a quick look, and downed a bit of it. Immediately, it was apparent that this was a carbonated drink. I have absolutely no clue as to why that didn't cross my mind prior to purchasing it. You see, I'm one of those freaks that doesn't really touch soda because I can't handle the carbonation, so that was honestly an experience. Second thing of note, this was the zero sugar version of the drink, so in all honesty, I have absolutely no idea what monster tastes like. I'd give it like maybe 6 out of 10. Now all that said, it wasn't awful, but it was really strong. Like I could drink a couple sips of it, but they were very small sips, but oh boy did it keep me awake. I was wired throughout the night. So back to my life as the world's only underweight Discord moderator, I was back to playing idle games, checking Discord every once in a while, and chugging a bit of monster every time I needed a literal jolt of energy to keep myself going. Now I ended up throwing the monster away around 4 or 5 in the morning because while the energy was helpful, it felt like repeatedly drinking battery acid. In all honesty, I really just can't handle the carbonation. Now, I think it was at this point that I decided I was going to make a video on this experience because, quite frankly, it was so odd and absurd in some ways that I wasn't even mad that I wasn't able to sleep for 43 hours straight. Call it Stockholm, if you will. Anyways, I decided making a script for the video was for later, so naturally, I forgot all the important parts until having to ask almost everyone weeks later what actually happened. Nearly two and a half hours after the animatronics decided to screw off, it was 8.27am and my friend, and basically channel sponsor at this time, D, was on and playing Fortnite. I shoot him a DM, and the conversation basically goes as follows. You like Fortnite? Yep. You wanna stream it? Sure. You see, women may not understand this, but using fewer words in a text message is the peak of human existence. Us men, we use one or two words for efficiency. In fact, here's what the world would look like if we all texted with just one or two words. So D streams Fortnite for a bit, and then I finally hear over the intercom the following words. All flights have been cancelled, and we'll resume at 8am. My first thought is, wait, isn't it already 8am? Now this would be right if that's what actually happened. I think I switched the order of this event and the Fortnite in my head, but honestly, the sleep deprivation was killing me at this point. So this could be the order of events with my very poor documentation as to the cause of the discrepancy in the order of the events. Hey, Postscript writing TQ here, and yes, this was the wrong order. This was actually the second time I stood in line to ask what was happening, because there were more issues coming later in the video. So I told D I'd be back in 5 minutes as the line was forming at the desk next to the flight. One hour later, I finally got back to him saying, Sorry, I can't watch the Fortnite stream. There are more issues with the flight. RIP. Yeah, I feel bad about that one, and honestly, D has been nothing but a blessing to our group in this channel, so I'm sorry about that one, D. There's also the FNF footage that D collected later for an idea that we eventually scrapped because the Discord agreed that FNF is cringe. 
Anyways, I really had been standing in line for an hour. When I finally got to the end, I'm handed a $200 voucher so I can embark on more endlessly delayed flights and another ticket so that I can still get home. I tried asking them, hey, can I get a hotel and some sleep if there are going to be further delays? The response I get was, we're not offering hotels at this time. I think the fact that there were kids aged 5 to 12 sleeping on the floor while the statement was made pissed me off quite a bit, but I do understand the current staffing issue that the airport was facing alongside the numerous other issues. At the end of the day, I don't know what the cause for everything was, but honestly, I was leaning towards it being a matter of Southwest's competency. Remember those headlines I mentioned earlier? If you were searching for flight delays, typically Southwest's name would come up quite a few times. That, in tandem with the other flights that I could clearly see taking off at the airport, the signs displaying different information than what with the intercom was communicating, and even the app providing false information was a bit more than concerning. Now, fast forward a bit to just before noon, and I realize that I'm starving. It's been a while since I've eaten, and as a college student, I tend to forget to eat on occasion. Or most days, depending on how you look at it, but... Uh, I don't know, I never counted. I'm not really a math guy, you know? Alright, so I walk back over to the Jersey Mike's and General Food Court area, and it's packed. The airport is once again busy as ever, although this time with an angry and sleep-deprived mob of 8-year-olds that slept on the floor. After I saw the lines, I thought, yeah, I'd rather starve. So instead, for the next hour, I sat under the main sign that led to the individual gates, and chilled on my laptop again. Although, whenever I saw people wondering about the flight delays, I often interjected to tell them, hey, I'm sorry, but the delays aren't really going to get any better. I've been here since last night as well. Some people shrugged it off, and others saw the mutual look of despair in the eyes of the hungry and tired people around us, and left early. Truthfully, leaving now is probably the best decision they could have made, because it would still be nearly half a day before the delays would end. I looked over my shoulder frequently to check the lines, but after an hour, there was no sign of the lines getting any shorter than the kids that were sleeping on the floor. Until... I saw a $5 strawberry banana smoothie. If you know anything about me, I am about as cheap as someone can get, despite being a furry, and half the money that I've spent on Steam this past year being put towards others. At the airport, however, I'm running on my parents' money, and I want to preserve that, because I think that's the right thing to do. Anyways, $5 smoothie with no line? Count me in. I wait for about 3 minutes and my smoothie is done, although upon delivery, it's not very clean. The guy was working very quickly and didn't clean up the smoothie, so not only was the counter dirty, but the smoothie was overflowing when he handed it to me as well. Don't get me wrong, it was delicious, and the refreshment was much needed. But some of it also got on my shoes, so now I can't forget this day, regardless of whether or not I want to, because there is now a permanent stain from the smoothie. You'll know how some dads always have those squeaky clean shoes that are white. Now, I'm not a dad, or hopefully even close to that, by any means, but my shoes were permanently tainted on an otherwise flawless record. Big sad. So I sat down, finished my smoothie, trauma dumped my time at the airport with a family who was also stuck at the airport while waiting my smoothie, and then I was back to waiting right in front of the doors to my airplane ride home. Except there was still no plane. Now began some of the worst issues I have ever seen at the airport, because not only were people a bit mad, but... Your Honor, this goes far beyond a moderate amount of trolling. You see, my client spoke with several agents at the airport because there was no gate listed for the flight on the tickets that were printed. Not only was the staff completely confused, but he was given a completely different set of directions by multiple attendants. This set him off on a journey of traveling between gates, asking for directions, followed by finding out that some of the signs on the gates weren't even listed correctly. To make matters worse, the Southwest app continuously updated the time to say 6 minutes later on the flight every 6 minutes. Hmm, well with evidence being considered, I've sent in Southwest to 5 rounds of half -time. Oh come on! Yeah, so conditions weren't exactly improving. I spent a lot of time just wandering around, and at some point met the main protagonists of our story. I know this is like the end of the video, but these are definitely the main protagonists because it's a group of two guys and one girl, which is the premise of like every movie ever. They're all school teachers and were stuck trying to get on the same flight as me, so for the next hour, I mostly just hung out with them, and I learned about all 62 ointments that they need to have their joints function at 70% efficiency. They will later come back to the story in another couple of hours. So after that, I sat down once again at one of the gates that I'd visited and hopped back on my laptop. Friends were back on Discord, so we talked for a while. Now, I was out of energy, out of monster, and out of hope that the flight was going to get here. I would forever be trapped at the airport. Or was I? After 27 hours of delay, the flight was finally here. Now for the 30 minute onboarding process. When each group was called, so flight groups A, B, and finally mine, C, you could hear people screaming and cheering to finally go where they needed to be. One of the teachers I'd met earlier was one of the first people to get on the plane, and he paused after getting his ticket scanned, looked at the guy scanning tickets, and quickly yelled into his mic, LET'S GO! And everyone in the room made even more noise. The ecstasy was tangible as people fluttered into the plane. Of course, it still took a while to board the plane, so I was a bit on edge. In that state of edginess, as one might call it, I went and bought a $12 turkey and cheese sandwich, which while cheaper than the $19 sub from Jersey Mike's, is still not at all worth the money or 27 hours. I scurried back to my seat, scarfed on the sandwich, and when it was my time, hurried onto the plane. 
When everyone had gotten onto the plane and stowed our belongings, and assured us that the weather was the cause for the 27 hours of delay. There's a small airstrip that most of the planes have to fly through, and it was suffering from some bad weather, which is understandable, but it didn't explain why other planes were leaving. Man, it's a great thing I'm immune to propaganda. So I slept soundly through this flight, which admittedly was much needed, as I'm sure my heart loved the 43 hours of no sleep, and the 160 milligrams of caffeine in that monster. I unloaded from the plane, and from there it was mostly smooth sailing. My dad picked me up from the airport, and I left to head home. Now that brings me to the part of the story where I explain this all over again, because my parents asked me about my adventures at the airport, and while I didn't have this video to give to them, I did have a Jersey Mike's receipt, a strawberry banana smoothie stand in my shoe, and an exhausted look on my face. TQ later went on to play Overwatch 2 for two hours that night because he clearly wasn't tired. During that time, he also had homework that was due that he completed between lobbies of Overwatch. Then he slept soundly for another 14 hours straight. But the question still stands, why Overwatch? Has he lost it completely? Is the sleep getting to him? Why does he feel the need to play shitty games? This is TQ we're talking about, a man who plays idle games for a living. Just look at this Steam profile. Nick, you can't really make this up. Thank you all for making it this far in this absurd story of mine. It was fun to experience, fun to write, and although it took me three weeks, it was really fun to record as well. Thanks again to our amazing channel editor who puts in the work that, quite frankly, I wouldn't be able to. Thanks to our channel artist who makes my random request possible. If you'd like to support more stories like these, there's the Patreon in the description, and hey, you'd get the honorary title of the first member if you sign up. Anyways, much love to the people who helped me power through the night, and as always, have a good one, y'all. I'm straight, trust me.